I've been all over the world. This is Dick the Bruiser, Bruiser Bedlam, and I have never seen anything as wild as the wild Polynesian man. With all that paint, he looks like Moose when he's drunk. <laughs> He'll be here today, fans, along with Prince Mama Mohammed and a gigantic six-man tag team bout. Your buddy, the Moose, teams up with Chris Carter and Calypso Jim. They'll be going against the Kentucky Butcher, Jerry Graham, and Don Kent. You want to see some action? Watch the Moose and that bunch in that six-man tag. I can hardly wait. It. I can hardly wait to see it. Oh, it's something else, I'll tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Wrestling Association is proud to present International All-Star Championship Wrestling. Another edition of Bruiser Bedlam, coming to you from the fabulous Premier Center in Detroit. Mexico weighing 236 pounds, Jose Alicia! Jose Alicia! His opponent the, from the island of Samoa weighing 250 pounds, the wild Polynesian man! One fall, 10 minute time limit. Here we go, this cruel and vicious Samoan, the wild Polynesian man. Oh, what is... This man is something else. Yeah. Cruel wild. looking individual on his way into the ring. He's wild already. Right. There he is with a display of his power and his physique. Jose Alicia, quite a skilled competitor. He'll give the wild Polynesian man a true test. The wild Polynesian man, again, very, very slow in getting everything off and ready to engage in some combat here. I remember, Terry, I wrestled guys with sticks and things like that. And if you let him hang around like that, I'd take that stick and bend it right over his head. Yeah, that's the threat that the man like that always uh, has to put up with. Yeah, you know, because sooner or later they're going to use it on their opponent, so you might as well hit him first. <laughs> so one of the fans at ringside just called it his ugly stick. Yeah, they <laughs> said... <laughs> he may have hit it on the head there. They said Jose Alicia hit him on the head with that stick. There goes Jose, he's ready. Yeah. He's already, he's had enough of these stalling tag picks. I think they're deliberate, too. Jose... Uh, Jose's one of the fastest wrestlers I've ever seen. You watch before this match is over. The wild man will wonder where he is. Wild man looking a little bit confused at this point by the attack of Jose Elysius. Moves right in on Jose, forces him onto the ropes. He's down with a hard forearm. There's that chop. Yeah. I've seen him put a couple of men away with that chop. That is a dangerous move on his part. It's plenty strong. But so is Jose Alicia. Don't give him, don't give him short change yet, Terry. Jose forces the wild man into the corner. Wild man reverses, though. And there's that chop again on Alicia's by the wild Polynesian. He's certainly a man who comes to us with a big reputation. He has confined most of his wrestling to the most places like Hawaii. Now Aust here he is in the WWA. He's been to Australia for several years. Hawaii. A lot of wrestling in the South Sea Islands here. Right. We saw him rake away at the face of Elysius. There's that chop again. I understand he used, uh, several years ago, he was the Asian champion. Beat everyone in yeah, uh, big tournament. Yeah, in the Far East. He's in for the count now on Jose Elysius. He manages to kick out though at about the count of two. Uh, let's see. I don't give Elysius. I don't think he's given up yet. This has been uh, quite a give and take uh, battle as the wild man taken off his feet by Elysius. Uh, There's the elbow smash right uh, to the knife. Elysius tough. He's as tough as they come out there. The 
wild man's got to be plenty tough to keep ahead of him. Elysius knows a lot of good moves, and as much as he knows, he would be well advised yeah. to use a wild Polynesian man. It stretches those deltoids when he was just there. Elysius knows how to chop himself, as we just saw. Break at the face of the wild Polynesian. Off the ropes he goes, and he's caught with that clothesline. Uh-oh, there he goes. He's got Elysius down, and here he goes up. Uh, up see. to the top rope, let's watch see. him carefully. Oh. Uh, oh. I'll tell you, I think it's a dead heat. El Bracero and the Wild Man both jump high. And another victory for the Wild Polynesian Man. The only thing I can say for the Wild Polynesian Man is he can jump as high as El Bracero, but he weighs more. That might give him a few points. Let's take a look at it again. This guy is certainly quite a threat, quite a force to be contended with, and I'm sure the top stars like Flying Frick Curry and Moose Cholak, Chris Carter, have taken notice of moves just like that. Beautiful move. And referee Al Thomas puts in the count, and that is it. Three count goes in. Calypso Jim is coming right up along with much more as we return. Before we talk about our next spectacular wrestling event at Kip South coming on Sunday, May the 4th, we want to welcome one of our sponsors of Bruiser Bedlam here to the program today. From Metropolitan Distributing, Sam Botek, welcome. Distributor of Miller Beer and Miller Lite here in the area. And you have got an extra special event coming up to talk about on Memorial Weekend, right? Yes, we do. Uh, real quickly, we have a uh, third annual Toledo International Grand Prix Hydroplane Race coming to Toledo this year at the Holy Toledo Spring Festival. And uh, we're really excited about it. Uh, Memorial Weekend from noon till 6. And we're going to have a boat entered, the Miller Country Store boat, a hometown favorite. And it's going to be a lot of fun, so I hope everybody comes down and enjoys their house. We'll be there. No fun, though, at all at Kip South. The last time we had wrestling there, a wild, wild night from beginning to end, especially so in the battle between Calypso Jim and Dr. Jerry Graham. They ignored the rules. That's why, we'll talk more about it later, but that's why they're coming back in a street fight on Sunday, May the 4th at Kip South for the final show of the season. Terry, I can't wait to see this because uh, it was just blood all over the place. The refs weren't watching anything. It was a, it, it, the fans were going crazy. I couldn't believe the chaos that was going around at Kip South. I've been going to wrestling for years. I've never seen anything like it. And I can't wait for this street fight because uh, I think Dr. Jerry Graham is going to have a day of reckoning here. I'm not sure, but Calypso Jim was, looked really tough that night. Absolutely. And certainly this... Uh, feud, if you will, grudge between Graham and Calypso Jim goes far beyond the bounds of normal wrestling rules, and it's to be expected they're not going to follow the rules, and that's why the street fight is, uh, rules are in effect, because basically there are no rules at all in a street fight. Anything goes. Exactly right, and I've seen on film what Dr. Jerry Graham allegedly says he didn't do, but I saw it, and a lot of fans did too, and uh, Calypso Jim is after revenge, and there's going to be big problems at this street fight. Yes, there will. That's just one of the great bouts on Sunday, May the 4th, the final wrestling event of the season at Kip South. That's Sunday, May the 4th. Ringside tickets on sale right now at Kip South. Make sure you join us ringside. Our next bout, one fall, 10-minute time limit. Wait a minute. My man here, the great Zoltan Thunder, has just made an arrangement with Dr. Graham, and he is going to be working for me. Now... The very thought of this man being trained, schooled, and coached by Dr. Graham has terrified everybody else in the WWA. I was back in the dressing room. Quit looking at me like that. We were back in the dressing room trying to get somebody to give my man a match. And you know what they were doing? They were in the corner, trembling. They were wrapping themselves around the pole. They didn't want to come out. Nobody wanted a match with him. Everybody was afraid of this guy. And I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit disgusted. I'm a little bit disgusted because there's nobody that wants this man. And I don't care who it is, but there's nobody here that wants him. I don't understand this. I don't understand it at all. There's no challenges. We're looking, here comes Calypso Jim. Calypso Jim and Zoltan Thunder. Well, Calypso Jim came flying into that ring just about as quickly as Jerry Graham went flying out of it. Big power slam by Calypso Jim. 
And the, it's, oh, or is it? No, he was able to rock his shoulders, didn't get the victory there with that power slam. A second one. This is a little bit different from the power slam used by uh, Muhammad Jihad Saad. Both of them used that hold very effectively. That took the wind out of Jerry Graham's sails. They're out of his man seconds. anyway, Zoltan Thunder. Like, he beat him in 37 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Oh, that should take a lot of wind out of Jerry Graham. Look at the look on look the face Doug. of Calypso Jim. I, I, I hope he doesn't tear his suit off again. Although, oh, uh, oh, that might be sort of fun. I take it back. I hope he does, too. That I might hope be he, sort of fun. I hope he tears his pants and his coat off again. Calypso well, Jim, a beautiful victory. Well, will he do it? We saw uh, that power slam applied twice by Calypso yeah. Jim. Jim wants. We've seen it earlier from Muhammad Jihad Saad. Get in there just sitting here thinking what an interesting encounter that might be, the battle of the power slams between Calypso Jim and Muhammad Jihad Saad. But meanwhile, Graham turns his back on Calypso Jim, huh? not too willing to engage in any physical encounter at this point in time. Well, I think we're about to hear some more words of wisdom from... Oh, now wait a minute, what's going on here? Yeah, he's mad at him. He was uh, shown up, Graham was embarrassed. This Graham. is the man he supposedly is trained. Yeah, Graham, Graham's there. Graham is absolutely upset. Graham gets the stuffing out of Zoltan. People either do what I tell them or they get that. Well, whoa. I told you he was oh upset. Oh, gosh. Well, that's gone a little too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope. I had oh, no, no, wait a minute, there he goes after him. Uh, well, we have a little altercation on the outside of the yet. ring here beyond uh, camera range between. Uh, there he goes. And there's the end result of that. They're going to have to carry the result in the way. They just engaged in a couple of uh, punches back and forth between each other, and I think that thing will continue in the dressing room. Let's take a look at it again as we see our instant replay, which actually involves the entire match in this particular case. 37 Calypso seconds, Jim Terry. Answers the challenge from Jerry Graham. Out of nowhere he comes. There's the headbutt. Very shortly, watch for this power slam. This is a lethal weapon on the part of Calypso Jim. A little bit different from the one used by Muhammad Jihad Saad. Both, though, with about the same end result. It's a There's lot the power quicker. Slam. It's a lot quicker if you notice the way he spins around. Now look, the left shoulder is not on the mat. The referee is on his toes. Doesn't complete the count this particular time, which gives us an opportunity here to set power slam yet a second time. I don't think there was very much left at all at this point. Uh, in Zoltan Thunder. Watch how quick he, quick he spins. Yeah. That's, that's the secret of that. Just that quick. He caught his man, took him down, and certainly no question about it. The victor, Calypso Jim. Still to come, that great six-man tag team bout with the Moose Carter and Calypso Jim against Graham Kent and the Kentucky Butcher. We'll return with Graham's gallery after this. Bruiser Bedlam comes to Brighton, Michigan. All you fans in the Brighton area, Friday, May the 2nd, Championship Wrestling right there in Brighton. Also coming to Lima, Ohio, Bruiser Bedlam at the Ohio Theater 2, Thursday, May the 8th. Back here in Toledo, the final show of the season at Kip South. That's coming up Sunday, May the 4th. A true spectacular night of wrestling. The main event, the street fight battle between Calypso Jim and Dr. Jerry Graham. We'll have much more to say about that before Sunday, May the 4th. Basically, there are no rules in this thing. The men come into the ring fully clothed, and the man who wins is the man who can rip all the clothes off his opponent right down to his wrestling terms. More about that later. Quite a grudge building between Chris Carter and the Polynesian Wild Man. They'll go at it Sunday, May the 4th. El Braceri, Bulldog Don Kent, who's back in town. You'll see Prince Mama Mohammed meeting Frankie Adonis, and for the first time ever, a world champion has never done anything like this, but the great Wojo is looking for the two toughest men in Toledo. He will face them Sunday, May the 4th at Kip South for $10,000 and the championship belt. If either one of them can defeat Wojo, can pin him, they win $10,000 in the belt. Leave your name, your address, your phone number, your height, your weight, and your qualifications at Kip South, and they've got all the details right there. Back here in Toledo, Sunday, May the 4th, Bulldog Don Kent back in town. You're in the ring against a guy very familiar to you, El Bracero. Well, first of all, the thing I want to talk about, how can this guy, Clipso Jim, all of a sudden come up and decide now he wants to challenge uh, a street fight match with Dr. Jerry Graham? And here he's already, Graham just, I guess what I heard, I was barred. But what I heard, he would just be completely down. 
And how can he come up and challenge the doctor again? And then, who are they going to find two tough guys that are going to challenge Waldo in the tournament? Pretty tough people in this town. Uh, I haven't seen him yet because everything I've seen come up and challenge Waldo, it's just like, like nothing. It's like Pete taking candy from a baby. And I'll tell you what, I know I'm doing well, it's happening. We're out of time. We'll see you Sunday, May the 4th, Kips out. Fans, something that's got the whole world of professional wrestling talking, the WWA is a new addition, the Kentucky Butcher. For many, many years, Yukon Moose Sholak has enjoyed the privilege of being the biggest man in the WWA and possibly the biggest man in wrestling. And now Moose is stymied because yours truly, Dr. Jerry Graham, has had the foresight, knowledge, and wisdom to go out and recruit new talent, to bring new wrestling into the WWA. And one of my newest and most fondest recruits, a man who will surely be the Rookie of the Year in the WWA, the Kentucky Butcher. And Butcher, the people here, I'm sure, want to hear some of your insights on what you think about the North in general and Moose Sholak in particular. I don't like Yankees and I don't like Sholak. I don't like him. He's too small. I whoop him. In other words, you don't think he's big enough to give you proper competition? No, he's not. I don't think he is either, as a matter of fact. In fact, I've been told that down in Harlan, Kentucky, that there's people in kindergarten that are as big as Moose Sholak. Is that, well, and I a guy that don't even graduate from kindergarten tells me that I am nothing. Listen, this guy has been going around dressing rooms around the country telling other wrestlers that he's going to pick up big Yukon Moose Cholak and slam him in the ring. Impossible. I can Nobody can do that. Well, now listen, punk. You're a punk to me, and when you didn't graduate from kindergarten, you ain't telling no, me. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. And your mother should have took you behind the barn with wait a minute. and gave you wait a minute. I'm trying to, con to, I'm trying to conduct an intelligent okay. interview here, and I don't need to listen to your big mouth. I'm going to tell you something. Talk to Moose Sholak, this man here, the Kentucky Butcher, could pick up a guy twice your size and slam him. I'm going to tell you something. Kentucky Butcher, that. you know, I'm going to tell you something. I've been down to Harlan, Kentucky. I heard you were down there. You used to work in the coal mines until you got too big to get into the mines. And then you fought in the Union Wars down there. I mean, everybody knows about bloody Harlan, Kentucky, and the Union Wars. Let me ask you this. Whose side did you fight on? Did you fight for the company, or did you fight for the unions? Depending on who wanted to pay me more. I mean, you'd go back and forth. Whoever had the money, whoever had the bread, had the butcher, right? right. And is this kind of why you came up north now to work for Dr. Graham? Because I laid some bread on you, right? That's right. Now, I notice this big mouth. I don't know what he is. This big, let me finish talking. You've the got a big mouth. count $2 this, in his pocket. Wouldn't he? He thinks $2. Let me tell you something. Money. When you get into the ring, Moose Sholak, you're not going to have a reading and writing contest with the Kentucky butcher. You're not going to have a money counting contest with the Kentucky. You're going to have an old fashioned wrestling match, as they say down in bloody Harlan, Kentucky. And this man doesn't look a bit worse. Moves. I mean, you've been. I told you on Graham's. You, I'm ready for this on, big Kentucky butcher. On, I want to see him slam me. I want to see how big and strong he really is. Well, the promoters tell us that this match is in the works and we might see uh, it in the WWA before you know it. Another edition of Graham's Gallery. Thank you. Moose coming off of that 430 is like hitting a brick wall. You just go down. Destruction in. Destruction here could be two per opponents. Graham Inkent, the train they call it. Oh, look at it, Dave. Look at it. Here comes Wojo, and the referee's not calling for a disqualification because Moose invited the man into the ring. And Cecil Manalina is in amazement here at ringside at the ring being moved right toward him. Look at the Moose. Oh, 430 pounds, Thomas. Would you like to be under their title? David, I wouldn't like it at all. Can I give you ten thousand dollars to do it? I, I wouldn't take it if you were giving it away. You can give me a million dollars to sit under you, God moves like that. A million dollars? I don't think I'd do it for a million either. Oh my, my body would be aching not David, for a week or a month, a year. Everybody's aching. Dr. Graham's aching. The Wojo's aching. Everybody's aching. And I think Yukon Moose is just getting warmed up. And Wojo's ribs just coming from a repair job, if you will, from the hands of Terry Tyler. Did you ever see that man, Thomas, a few weeks ago on TV? Terry Tyler, fans from the stand, off of welfare, and he almost took Wojo out with that bear hug. Terry Tyler's got to be one of the great potential wrestlers that I've ever seen. The guy's got a lot of potential. Rough around the edges, Dave, but I'm telling you, if he can ever get some direction, he's going to be a great one. He certainly is. Chris Carter's training him now. The big Yukon call. Thomas, they loved it. I think the moose is mad. 
I could be mistaken, but I think the moose is ready. Oh my, right into Graham. And now the bulldog raking the eyes of Moose. And Moose throws him into Bobo, who's awaiting. But the full force of Bobo, not effective yet, for he's still drained from the effects of Ken and Graham earlier in the bout. Bobo taking Ken by the back of the neck, winding up and giving him a little punch to the side of the jaw. Moose staying in there holding Don Kent. And Billy Beach trying to make an automatic break here. Not successful yet, Moose lets him go. Into the Moose, it's a train. Oh, Davey, you see, Moose got together, they talked it out, they got in the corner and decided what they were gonna do to Ken well, before I, they did it. I'll have to give you a little insight. Moose is missing about three teeth. The bottom of his jaw was hit severely by Ken a few weeks ago. And he wants Bulldog Don Ken. Graham coming in with headbutt city. The Coco butt, look at him, look at him, here he comes. Salt, salt, or some type of salt or powder, or something has been thrown all over Bobo Brazil. Some type of powder. Some type of powder. They've called for the bell. The bell has been sounded. Bobo Brazil is being counted. This next bout will be one fall, 10 minute time limit. Introducing first from St. Louis, Missouri. Weighing in today at 250 pounds, Jeff Stanton. Stanton. His opponent hails from the wilds of Uganda. Weighing in at 320 pounds. Introducing Prince. Mama Muhammad! Mama Muhammad! One fall, 10 minute time limit. Here he is. Right. His Highness, Prince Mama Muhammad against Jeff Stanton. I wonder how long it took those uh, hairs to grow on his legs, Terry. That, that gray hair there on his legs? Is that from him or is that... Hard to tell. The crown comes off here, being uh, taken away by one of our lovely ring attendants. I'm sure. As referee Al Thomas calls for the bell. I'm sure he's serious about keeping his legs warm, but that's an extreme. Oh, nice move by Stanton. You were telling me about the amazing amateur background oh, oh, of Stanton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we he's, saw. And he's well built. And, and he's smart. Quite a bright future for him. They lock yeah. up with the referee hole. Prince Mama Muhammad. Definitely quite a force to be reckoned with in the World Wrestling Association. He has an open contract. Will refuse no one. And all the oh, good move. Fireman's carry takedown applied by Stanton. He's got that arm bar clamped on the big man from Uganda. Prince Mama Mohammed is a very, very dangerous man. He'll come at you when you least expect it with a move that'll absolutely put your lights out. This guy is so powerful and strong. And so huge, too. He's got to be six and a half feet tall. Yeah, he's about 6'6". Six, six. He weighs at least three. Good move by Stanton. He that is shows dazzling you. the big man. I told you, this, this Stanton fella has got a lot of amateur background. And certainly that is working to great effect thus far in this bout. Rarely is it that we see... Prince Mama Mohammed show any emotion, but I think what we're seeing there is just a little bit of befuddlement. That's right. There's nothing can befuddle you like good solid wrestling. I don't think the prince has anywhere near the background in that kind of wrestling right. as Stanton does. His moves. I'll tell you what, when I was wrestling uh, full time, there's nothing befuddled me that, like an amateur wrestler uh, that uh, had, knew all the holes. I, uh, sometimes it's, it would amaze you what these guys can do to you. Oh, sure, because they can come at you from anywhere and grab uh, one of your legs, your toes, your arms, your fingers, anything. Right. 
Still to come, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy, what a main event we've got. Six-man tag team action. Moose Cholak, Chris Carter, and Calypso Jim against the Kentucky Butcher, Dr. Jerry Graham, and Bulldog Don Kent. It's going to be a war. While you were talking, Terry, this, this big mama Muhammad gave him four elbows. Oh! That had to take a lot of starch out of his stand. Started right at the top vertebrae and worked his way down. There's not too much Stanton can do as long as the Prince uh, if, keeps something like this on him. If the Prince can keep Stanton on his, on his flat on his stomach, he oh, has there's no that chance. knee. Has no chance. Right into the small of the back. And he has got the legs twisted up, has his toe hold on, and. I hate to say, to say it, but Mama Muhammad looks a little bit like an amateur wrestler. In this that's particular a, stance, he certainly does. That's a good writing hold he's got. Well, he has had some schooling. He's very mysterious about uh, exactly what his history is in terms of his training. But, uh, now, where he's from, they, uh, they wrestle cattle and... Lions everything. and tigers and yeah, bears? everything. No bears. Not no, no, no bears, but... No! But they wrestle uh, anything that moves. Stanton looking to get to the ropes. He's a little too far for that, though. He's just going to have to withstand the torment being put on him by Prince Mama Muhammad. His size will certainly suit him well in the WWE. Well, of course, a, a lot of big men around. We'll see the Kentucky Butcher next. We'll see him in a six-man tag team bout. And on the other side, one of the partners will be Moose Cholak. And quite a... Quite a tale to be told there between Moose Cholak and the Kentucky Butcher. I don't think the Kentucky Butcher's going to wrestle. He's going to be out there probably with Graham and Kenton uh, just to, to help aggravate the Moose so that the Moose uh, doesn't know what he's Maybe doing. Maybe loses his cool a little bit. That's right, exactly. Knee drop again into the small of the back by Prince Mama Mohammed. Stanton is able to make it to the ropes now. And the Prince... As things going his way at the moment, he's been able to stomp Stanton temporarily. Looked like a karate thrust into the throat by Prince Mama Muhammad. Stanton's gasping for air. See the amateur background. Where, where's Don Finn? Off the ropes he comes. And there it is, the belly to belly. Uh, when he knocks that wind out of you, then you forget your amateur status. The wind knocked out of you. You can't think straight, Terry. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the position that Stanton's in right now. Yeah. He is trying vainly to get to his feet as the Prince climbs the ropes. If he doesn't get up and he flies on him flat. Oh! Oh, well. Just caught him, demolished him. Yeah. And that is it. Yeah, he went over the top of him and caught him with, the, with his hip. We give Stanton a lot of credit for what he was able to do in the early parts of this match, but once the Prince got going, there was just no stopping him. He was like a big freight train. Yeah. Well, Stanton hopefully will live to fight another day. As Prince is not finished yet. Prince is determined to apply some more punishment to Jeff Stanton and dumps him right out of the ring. Cracked his back, it looked like. Look at those welts. Stanton's a mass of welts on his back there, on his side. You'll certainly know he's been in a match after this encounter with Prince Mama Mohammed. Let's take a look at it again. The Prince has climbed the ropes now. You know, we're talking well over 300 pounds as he gets set and just he hit him. comes right down on his man. He missed his head and hit him with his hip. And that is it. Yeah, that could probably over. be worse, you know. You get hit with a hip right in the stomach. Yeah. That'll knock the wind out of you. In for the count. Nice. That is it. No doubt about it. The winner, Prince Mama Mohammed. That great six-man tag team bout is coming up. Stay with us. Bruiser, this is the one we've all been waiting for, this gigantic six-man tag team war. And we are set to go with it. Let's go up to the ring. It's going to be war, all right. This spout will be one fall, 20-minute time limit. Introducing a six-man tag match. Mohammed Jihad Saad from Beirut, Lebanon. And the WWA Tag Team Champions. 
from Broken Bone, Arizona, Bulldog Don Kent. And from New York City, Dr. Jerry Graham. They are accompanied by the Kentucky Butcher, Dr. Graham's latest discovery. Their opponents are the man from the North Country, the man from the Yukon, Moose Shalak. From the De Motor City, USA, Detroit, Michigan, Chris Carter, the spirit of America. And ladies and gentlemen, returning from Kingston, Jamaica, Calypso Jim. Six man tag, one fall, 20 minute time limit. Well, Bruiser, we've got Carter, Calypso Jim, and Yukon Moose Cholak. Three men on one side, and actually four on the other side. I don't know which of these, which three of these four are going to be involved in the actual match. You notice that when the Moose is, moose is near the Butcher and Graham, they kind of put their backs to him. But when the Moose turns his back, they insult him every way they can. Yeah, absolutely. They're relentless in their verbal assaults so far. We'll see how they can do physically. That's yes. the one thing everybody is See, when the moose, for. moose is facing them, they, uh, they give him plenty of room. But now he'll turn his back, they'll yell more insults. Well, the Kentucky Butcher will be on the outside. It'll be Mohammed Jihad Saad, Jerry Graham, and Don Kent, the Bulldog, against UConn Moose, Cholak, Chris Carter, and Calypso Jim. The Bulldog and Chris Carter, the Spirit of America, leading things off. Off the ropes we go, here comes Kent, the collision, Carter down. That time, Carter avoids the, whoop. Nice move by Carter, and again, the arm drag, here's a body slam on Graham, Saad is in, he's caught in the body slam, Calypso in, putting in some moves of his own. It's Kent and Carter again, the two legal men in the ring. The collision, Kent is down. I can't, can't keep, I can't keep up with it. No, we'll do our best here, uh, fans. I can't keep up with it. Thank this goodness action. we've got a fantastic crew on hand who will be able to let you see exactly what we can't keep up with verbally. That's right. Well, I can't keep up. Graham comes in. He's caught by Calypso. Jim takes them both over. Beautiful moves by the Calypso. There's the tag. Muhammad Jihad Saad faces off against Calypso. Jim. Big slam by Calypso. Jim. The Moose and Carter wait in their corner. Things calm down for just a moment here as Calypso Jim applies some heavy pressure to that side headlock. That's the kind of thing that causes those cauliflower ears, isn't it? Collision, down goes side. Calypso with a nice hip toss takedown and the tag. Here comes Chris Carter. I just can't get over Terry. Calypso Jim just doesn't look the same without his braids. Up there. They've got this side this time. You know, Saad and Carter, the confrontation between these two goes way, way back. It wasn't very many weeks ago. We saw a match between Carter and Muhammad Jihad Saad here on television and saw Saad's wife hand him a chain, which he used to defeat Chris Carter. So a lot of bad blood between these two. In fact, between all six of the men, Graham catches Carter with a knee. You saw it. I've seen it time and time again. Uh -oh, Good move, suplex by Muhammad He's got him, he's got him. He got away, Terry. The correction bruiser on that incident with the chain, what happened was Carter defeated Saad, and then it was at that point that Saad used the chain on Carter. Just want to set the record straight there, very important. Uh, you're right. Head first into the knee goes Carter of Jerry Graham. Moose and Calypso Jim both Longing for that tag, but Carter's in no shape to give it right now. He's being kept away from him intentionally by Bulldog Don Kent. Carter hurtled from the ring right in front of our table here. Graham coming uh, down to do some damage to Carter. And a body slam right get him, onto Jim, the get him, floor. Jim. Get him, Jim. Calypso Jim is uh, right there, though, to break that action up. Yeah, he got away from Jim. Carter took a hard bump right onto the floor. Carter being helped to his feet as referee Al Thomas puts the count in on him. He'll have a count of 10 to return to the ring. Kent forced the, the count to stop, though. Graham with a kick on Carter. Doing everything to keep Carter out of the ring, to take everything they can out of this great young wrestler from the Motor City. Calypso Jim aiding his buddy, his friend, and his tag team partner, Chris Carter here. 
As we have Ustilak waiting in the corner there. Kent with some heavy forearms laying him in on Carter. They have applied some brutal punishment to this guy. Every time he hits Carter, the... And they're holding him back in the corner now. Graham applying punch after punch. Oh, he's got Carter. There's the suplex by Graham. We've seen many excellent variations of the suplex on the program today. Boy, I tell you, you can just feel the excitement in the air, Bruiser. Six of the all-time greats in the World Wrestling Association going at it. What an exciting match this is. It's Saad legally in for his team. He continues the onslaught against Chris Carter. Of course, the crunch between these two goes way, way back. The chain incident just won in a series of events between these two. Saad scoops up his man, puts the big body slam, makes the tag. And Carter needs to get to his corner. He's got to get to Moose. Moose is the man. You can hear the fans, Bruiser, calling Moose, Moose, Moose. Yeah, he's got to get to Moose. Carter through the legs again, he, and he does it. There, now Moose, go. Go, Moose. Here comes uh -oh. the Moose, and brother, uh -oh. is he ready? You don't see him ganging up on him, not yet. No. Uh -huh. They don't want to get hit with a punch. Look at that. This guy is just like a bunch of sledgehammers coming in on you with every blow he does. Ken hurtled all the way across uh, the uh, ring by the Moose, a man of immense power and strength. All his weight there goes in on Ken. Here comes Graham, and Graham is forced into the corner on top of Ken. Saad now is gonna come in and try to do something, and he is thrown in. We've got them all six now. Oh, I hope the ring can take this. <laughs> the ring is moving steadily. The ring went at least six and eight inches. The fans love it. The whole ring moved on up. Well, you were right, Bruiser. We know now why they didn't want the Moose in, why they didn't want to let Carter make the tag to the Moose. I told you, Terry, they had to get the Moose. Uh-oh, Saad has got, got his work cut out now. Moose and Mohammed Saad. Moose lays a right hand in on him like, oh, brother. Now Moose. This guy is just incredible, just amazing. I don't know who can stop him. And he's certainly on the course in that way. And of course, we must comment on the ominous presence at ringside of the Kentucky Butcher. Well, keeping his eye on the action in the ring. Calypso Jeff now takes on Kent. He's making short shrimp of all three of them. Yeah. Calypso Jim with a flying mayor on, and now makes the tag as Carter takes over on Muhammad Jihad Saad. We've we noticed there's not too much skullduggery with these guys in this match, Terry, because I think our, our all-American type guys are just... They've earned a little respect for themselves, maybe. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think they're a good match for him. Yes, sir. We are seeing a doozy here. Ken is in now for his team against there, he's Carter. he's fighting back. Look at him go. Yes, sir. Give and take here. One after another. Uh, uh, the Bulldog's down. The Bulldog backpedaling into the corner. Carter's got him by the dog collar. I can't say enough for Chris Carter. No, he is something. Of course, I'm watching for that sleeper hold. Uh, I think he's going to give it to him now. Huh? With a slam. We've got a slam by Carter Graham, moves on in. There was no tag, and he gets slammed for his efforts. Muhammad Jihad Saad collects a blow also. Meanwhile, just out of camera range, the Kentucky Butcher looks on. And here's the man he's looking at. Moose Cholak makes his way into the ring, and the Moose is ready to go to war. The uh, Moose is ready. He wants any of them. Man. He wants all of them. Yeah, you're right, Bruiser. I think he'd do well against all three of them. Uh, not just one. He wants the three of them. Uh, and the Moose is taking care of all three of them right now. He's got Saad, though. Throws him over into his corner. Saad's in enemy territory. And the Moose lets go of the series of punches. And a chop in on Saad. Now the tables are turned. 
Now the Moose is, the Moose is, the Moose is just plain punishing. Italian Calypso Jim with the man in. Oh, and a forearm uppercut. Beautiful move by Calypso Jim. He caught him right in the teeth. Uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the butcher the up Kentucky to? Butcher getting on Moose Cholak. He's holding him from getting in there. Won't let him in as Saad has Calypso Jim on the inside of the ring. What is going on here? He's Graham like, going to the oh. top. And there's El Bracero. As Graham tried to jump off the top onto Calypso Jim. Oh, Bracero came out of oh, nowhere. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what? Oh. Well, I don't know what's going on here now, but I, I do believe we have a victory. It was Graham who was on the top rope. Bracero came in and broke it up, though. Grabbed Graham's foot, wouldn't let him jump off onto Calypso Jim. You know, as they say, there's a, a new word, unbelievable. Well, I didn't know. Watch. If Moose and the Kentucky Butcher get in. Get back, Moose. Get back. The okay. winners with a crotch hold, Moose Shaw, Chris Carter, and Calypso Jam. Get back, Moose. Your Carter. winner. Gentlemen, congratulations. Certainly you were able to withstand the onslaught of those four. You know something, Terry? I just want to take a second to thank God for giving me partners like Calypso Jim and the Big Moose. Well, Dr. Graham was coming in with one of his cheap shots again, and thanks to my good friend El Vassero, and we got this victory out in hand. And I don't know if you could see it on the outside, but the Kentucky Butcher was holding Moose Cholak's leg. Yes, he was man, I got something to say. Kentucky Butcher, you better look out because you can't moose it after you, man. And what you call we got? We got revenge, didn't we, Chris, man? All right, El Bracero, certainly the man in the right place at the right time for this match, but certainly a lot more to be told in this particular battle, especially with you and Saad. Now Chris, we want to thank you. We're out of time right now. Hope you enjoyed this tag team match, ladies and gentlemen. We're right back. Bruiser Bedlam back here in Toledo, the final wrestling show of the season at Kip South on Sunday, May the 4th. I want to talk about that street fight on the main event between Calypso Jim and Dr. Jerry Graham. If you were in attendance and saw the last match that they had, it was the wildest match probably ever in the history of professional wrestling. Actually, outside of Kip South, out into the parking lot and back inside, didn't follow the rules at all. It's degenerated into what you've got on Sunday, May the 4th, the street fight on that main event. No rules in this one, no time limit, no disqualifications, no countouts. The referee's only function in that match will be to determine the winner, to raise one man's hand. Now, both wrestlers, Jerry Graham and Calypso Jim, will be coming into the ring with their street clothes on. This also opens up a lot of interesting possibilities. They can wear heavy steel belts, regular street boots. They can put anything they want into their pockets, conceivably to use as weapons in the ring. The possibility is absolutely limitless, but this is what it's come to in this grudge between Calypso Jim and Jerry Graham. That is your main event. Also, the great Wojo looking for the two toughest men in Toledo. If you feel you fit the bill, stop at Kip South. They'll give you the details. You could win $10,000 and the title belt if you pin Wojo. The Midgets will also be on the program, along with Chris Carter, the spirit of America, back here in Toledo to meet the Polynesian wild man back here in Toledo, the city that you, I think, are just about ready to adopt as your hometown. You know something, Terry, I tell you, I can't believe it. You know, I come into Kip South there last time, and the fans just swarmed me. They come up to me. The, a very nice couple gave me this shirt, you know. But I'll tell you what, the wild Polynesian man, Terry, everybody at Kip South seen what he did to me last time, so I'll be looking for him. But you know something, Terry, something you said earlier, unprecedented in wrestling history, the champion of the world, the great Wojo, he, you know, the way he treats the people in Toledo, I can't believe it. Now he's asking for this. The two toughest guys to come on in and challenge them. Well, I'll tell you what, I know there's some tough dudes in Toledo. Get down to Kip South and get that information there quick. That's Sunday, May the 4th, fans. The action begins at 8 o'clock. We'll see you there. Have you watched The Wild Polynesian Man? You've seen everything from King Kong to Wild Oats. But I'm going to tell you now, when I watched that six-man tag, Terry, that was the most exciting thing I've ever seen. When the moose fell on his head, when he fell off the ring, and I just can't take it.
Well, we had a great opportunity to watch that six-man tag team bout, but plenty more action coming next week. You can say that again. Just remember, all over the world, it doesn't get as wild as Bruiser Bedlam. This has been a presentation of Bedlam Productions Incorporated in association with Championship Wrestling Incorporated.